and we are going to discuss about minimally displaced lateral condyle fractures. And uh, I see a lot of residents here who want to take notes. So don't take notes. You can just copy this QR code and entire presentation you will be able to download. So I'm just going to give 20 seconds to, to scan this QR code so that you can be attentive to what I'm saying and you don't have to take pictures during the talk or take notes, okay? Shall we go ahead? Okay. So what we are going to essentially talk about is Jacob stage one. And as you can see, this article <coughs> actually described the stages <coughs> of lateral condyle fractures, which subsequently people started using as classification. This is not a classification. These are stages of lateral condyle fracture. And in many textbooks, stage one is described as undisplaced lateral condyle fracture, which is also a misnomer because the classification itself says two millimeter displacement. So if it's two millimeter, less than two mm displaced, how can it be undisplaced? And these are the fractures when people treat it with close reduction. You get this fracture, think that it is minimally displaced, treat it with close reduction, and as you follow up, they end up with ununited lateral condyle fracture. These are the cases which come across our OPD day in and out. And, the, and when you attend clinics, your professor or lecturer will tell you that lateral condyle fracture is a fracture of necessity. Even if it's undisplaced, joint fluid will bathe the fracture. Common extensor origin will displace the fragment in the plaster. And hence, all these fractures must be fixed. So I want to know from audience here, you have two lateral condyle fractures, one on top one on bottom, okay? I have provided you with AP X-ray, lateral X-ray, and an internal oblique view, which is mandatory for decision-making process. I want to know from all of you the fracture in f at top. How many of you will treat in plaster? Just raise your hands, okay? <coughs> How many of you will fix this? Because if you don't fix, it will go in displace and non-union. How many of you? A lot of people don't have shoulder abduction. So they, are, they have not raised their hands for any of them. This is because okay, of dancing last night. Fracture at bottom. Uh, this is not being recorded, so people can can raise hands. There is no problem. Uh, one at bottom, how many will you put in plaster and treat this? How many of you will put a K-wire and fix this? Okay. So it's a mixed house. So you know there are various attitudes. People cast all the lateral fractures, lateral condyle fracture, which are minimally displaced, Jacob one. Some of them fix all, and some of them are selective. So I'm going to resolve this dilemma today by uh, you know, telling you some of the thought processes, which are, of course, not <laughs> given in books. But these are my thought processes. So basically, when you talk about undisplaced lateral condyle fracture, you have these two varieties. One on the right is one which is not going into the articular surface. And hence, this is the fracture which will not displace and can be treated in plaster. So Apneel, one on the left goes to the articular surface and it's going to displace in the slab and it needs to be fixed. The problem is this diagram, you know, which shows the fracture going into the intra-articular process, you cannot see on X-ray. Our most of the decision making is on the X-ray. This anatomy you will appreciate either on an arthrogram or a, on an MRI, which are both require M M uh, anesthesia and you want to make your decision on the X-ray. So the whole question is, by simple x-rays in the OPD, can you decide which Jacob type 1 you're going to treat in plaster and which Jacob 1 you're going to fix, okay? So let's come to some of the, you know, facts. I call this fracture as seemingly undisplaced lateral condyle fracture and all of us sulk about it. But then we have words of wisdom <coughs> which guide us into it. The first fact I want to, uh, you know, uh, share with you that undisplaced or minimally displaced lateral condyle fractures are at least 50% of lateral condyle fractures. So it's a it's a huge chunk. Okay, if they displace, if you treat it in plaster, five to 40% of them will displace. Okay, which means by fixing everybody, you are over treating 60 to 95% of these fractures. If you fix all the lateral condyle fractures. So there are many which can be treated with conservative management. Literature also tells us that displacement, if it occurs, it occurs in five days. So if you take an x-ray at one week, you will pick up those which have tendency to displace. This is something very important. If you put all lateral condyle fractures which are minimally displaced in plaster, 
if they were to displace the displacement will start in 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 first five days and you will notice at one week so at one week if the fracture is not displaced it is not going to displace further you don't need an mri or arthrogram to decide that you can decide just based on one week x-ray okay and this x-ray should be done out of plaster and at one week you are going to do again ap lateral and internal rotation view there are some more facts we know that if the fracture gap is less than one millimeter now one millimeter is equivalent to the cortex of the humerus so if the fracture gap is less than the cortex of the humerus thickness then the redisplacement rate is zero percent so we are coming to final decision making here if the fracture gap is more than one mm which is more than one cortex width of the of the humerus then the rate of displacement is 50 percent so if the fracture gap is less than one person you will conserve if it's more than one person then it's likely that you may have to fix in 50 percent of the cases again you know some more uh, uh, finery here shows that central gap is more important than the lateral gap so if if the lateral gap is more and central gap is less it means it's a converging fracture and it's likely that this fracture is not reaching up to the articular surface but its central gap is equal to the lateral gap it is more likely that this fracture is reaching up to the articular surface and that will require fixation the fractures which short, short stop short of physis will not displace because they don't reach, reach up to the articular surface and fractures with broken articular hinge which means the fractures more than 1 mm most of the time where central gap is more than the lateral gap and fractures which are reaching all the way down are more likely to displace okay and all these need to be studied on ap lateral and internal rotation views the classification what we use here is not jacobs classification but classification which was described way long back but which has completely hidden from the literature the textbooks and knowledge of orthopedic and pediatric orthopedic surgeon is this classification which is known as finbogason's classification and he very clearly said that undisplaced lateral condyle fractures can be stable when they don't reach they are only in the metaphysis when they are less than 1 mm he exactly said the same things and the, when the lateral fracture gap is less than the medial fracture gap those are stable they will not displace and they can be easily casted they can be indeterminate we really don't know what will happen to them when the fracture gap is between 1 to 2 mm but the central gap is less than the lateral gap <coughs> And then these can heal or this cannot heal. But now we know that if they are going to displace, it will happen by one week. So if you take an X-ray at one week and if it doesn't displace, they are going to still heal. If you take an X-ray at one week and then they, they are beginning to displace or not heal, then you can still put a pin at one week. And lastly, there are unstable fractures where the fracture gap is around two millimeter. Lateral gap is uh, equivalent to the medial gap. And these are the fractures which are unstable, <coughs> which you will pin on day one. Now Song, his classification is very famous, and what he did, he was exactly like Hindi remix music directors. He took up Jacob's classification, and he took Finn Bogerson's classification and, and mixed the two, and created his own recipe, which he called as a Song's music, which is Song's classification, which we admire so much, but it was nothing more than, you know, mixing two classification and creating his own track. And this is what is song classification. Now, based on this, we have written a small article in Indian Journal, International Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics. <coughs> and those of you who have phones on can take this QR code again so that you can download this article and know what these classification systems are all about uh, and know in detail about that. So let's go through actually some case examples and see how we treat this. <coughs> this is a five-year-old child with lateral condyle fracture. You see AP and lateral. The fracture in, in internal oblique view, you can see it's going only into the metaphysis. It's not going into the epiphysis. So this is Jacob 1, but also it is Finbagonosan A or Song 1. This is classified as a stable fracture. So this should be treated with well-fitted above elbow slab, not plaster, well-fitted above elbow slab. This should be done with elbow in 90 degree flexion, forearm in supination, and wrist in dorsiflexion. Why wrist in dorsiflexion? Because in dorsiflexion, the common extensor origin will be relaxed and it will not displace the fracture. So with this slab, you call the patient back at one week, remove the slab, take an X-ray, and if you see that fracture is not displaced further, put it in cast in the same position. 
how long the cast for one month at one month you buy wall the plaster take an x-ray again and if the x-ray shows that the fracture is united then no for the plaster if you are doubtful about the union even at four weeks the same plaster which is by wall i will convert into a removable slab protect the patient for two more weeks and call them back again so you have to follow up these patients and protect them till the time there is radiological evidence of union complete union okay this is a child five year old now here you can see the fracture is going across all the way the lateral gap is more but the dis here the fracture gap is less than the cortical th thickness of the of the humerus so this is less than 1 mm this is classified as undetermined okay so how do you treat this you you give a choice to the patient the patient was given a choice parent that we will do an mri and if mri shows that the fracture is going all the way to the articular surface with the same same starvation i am going to shift the patient to the ot and put two k wires and if the mri shows that the fracture is not displaced then i am going to put the patient in plaster and then send you back home okay so this was told to the parents parents refused mri i don't want to take a risk so what i did i put the patient again in the slab followed him up at one week at one week i see there is good callus formation there is no further displacement convert into a plaster till four weeks at four weeks i take x ray again this shows good healing so no further immobilization patient can be mobilized okay this is a four year old child ap lateral and internal oblique view again the fracture going till the articular surface uh, till, till uh, across the metaphysis but the lateral gap is more than the medial gap so again this is classified <coughs> as indeterminate type again advise mri here the parents agreed for mri and when we did mri it showed that the fracture was going all the way to the articular surface this patient at one week would have definitely displaced more likely and hence we did not wait for one week at the presentation after this mri we took the patient straight away into the ot and passed two percutaneous k wires and also confirmed that this was not displaced using an arthrogram so two divergent k wires here four weeks confirm that the fracture is healed will remove it and everything went all right now this is a 8 year old child where you see that the fracture gap is almost 2 mm the medial fracture gap is equivalent to the lateral fracture gap in internal rotation view so how do we classify this is from the audience unstable okay finbogason c song 3 so this fracture you will not put in plaster you will straight away take into the ot these are the varus and valgus views to again demonstrate that this is an unstable fracture so nowadays i don't do even arthrogram for these fracture jacob one which are unstable you know i will not do arthrogram because most of the time articular surfaces good in these patients directly past two divergent k wires here you have to keep the uh, elbow in internal rotation while passing the wires because that is where you see the maximum uh, uh, chunk of the lateral condyle and and the wires will go from anterior to posterior in most of these cases because that is how the fracture geometry is present again protect it you take x ray after after one month remove the wires and follow up these children okay so to summarize when you have apparently undisplaced lateral condyle fracture what is the first thing you do first thing is x ray in internal rotation in addition to ap and lateral if it's a stable fracture which means it is displaced less than 1 mm or if it's a convergent fracture or if it's short short it is short of physis you will give slab for a week take x ray after one week and if it's undisplaced at that stage you will give plaster very rarely these fractures will show you some displacement at one week and at that time you can do pinning but i have not come across any fracture which was in stable zone has displaced later on indeterminate you will advise mri if you on mri you see articular surface is intact and plaster if it's not intact you still do pinning for these patients if patient doesn't do mri then you give plaster for a week and if it displaces then you you will pin them at one week unstable all of them will undergo close reduction uh, close reduction just manipulation and pinning nowadays i don't do arthrogram for these patients and you you remove the pins after four weeks <coughs> so those of you who were attentive uh, you don't need to again scan this for those who were sleeping throughout the talk or were not attentive you can still get gist of this talk 
by clicking on this and downloading the whole talk to review later. Thank you very much.